Okay, so let's go into preferences. I'm gonna do uh, command comma to go into my settings. And there's a few pages here and I'm not gonna go into every single thing in detail. I think a lot of these are pretty self-explanatory. Uh, I can show screen flow options in the menu bar. Uh, I can count down for a different amount of time when I start recording. So by default, it, it waits five seconds. When you hit record, it waits five seconds for you to kind of make sure you're all set. I find that too long. So I actually mark that down to two seconds. That helps me uh, give me just enough time to make sure my screen is set up correctly, but not too much time that I feel like I'm waiting, which I like. You can change where they send diagnostic usage information to the company. Uh, you can lock the aspect ratio and scaling with the mouse. So basically that is here. So I've got this square image here. If I click and drag, it scales correctly. Um, and then if I go ahead and hold shift, I can actually make it stretch like that. Uh, if I have the other one set, it just reverses it. So if I just click and drag, it resizes it, re, uh, orients it, uh, whereas if I hold shift and drag, I get it to stay the same um, aspect ratio. So it's really whatever you are expecting to use more. I use it, uh, usually I want my images to lock, I don't want them to change, but either way you can hold shift to do the opposite of this. You can change the background color that is shown by default. So if I go in my timeline all the way over here to the left where I have no video here yet, it's just this off white. It defaults to a darker color, but I like the white one. Uh, and then you can decide to launch the ScreenFlow helper at login. This will help you be able to record your screen without launching the app from the menu or from the dock, I should say. And then you can check for updates. The timeline has lots of things here that are super useful. Um, None of these are super exciting at the top. Um, I will say that uh, ones that you may want to change are uh, when you double click something in the media catalog, send it to the timeline. So for example, if I am here, I got my scrubber at zero seconds, I go to my media library and I double click my rings. It just sent it straight to the timeline for me as a new track. So it's right there. Uh, the alternative is for you to open the clip editor. And so if I actually I'll do this one, then it opens that over here and then I can kind of scrub through it. I can set in and out points like that. And then I can kind of, oops, uh, let's see, there's a way to do it. Oh, hit plus and that adds it to the timeline, uh, whatever in and out points I set. So that's kind of nifty, but I don't use it myself. Um, I like to just throw it to the timeline and then I'll play with it. Down here at the bottom was where I get a lot of use. And so you can change the default transition. So if I kind of have these two video tracks, I can, put them together and then when they play back, they will fade, uh, right? So they'll just kind of fade in and out with a cross dissolve. I can change it to any of these. So there's quite a few. Um, I like cross, cross dissolve, but you can change that. Uh, default track height, you can make them smaller or larger. Again, I like the default. <laughs> and then a default action curve. This one is really nice. It defaults to linear. Uh, so, and basically what that's gonna do is if I go over here and kind of take this guy, I'm gonna make him a little smaller, move him over there. And then I'll show you how to do these transitions in a later section, but let's do a short one there. And at the end it's there, right? And so I look at this, I play it back and it moves like that. Um, which works great for me. It defaults to linear, uh, which isn't my preference. Uh, I kind of like that more natural uh, kind of start and stop. If you do linear, uh, which again, it defaults to, it's kind of more mechanical, which isn't great for me. Uh, so I really recommend ease in and out, uh, especially if you're doing uh, kind of screen shares. It really uh, looks much nicer, especially when you're zooming in, for example, on a video. Uh, so if we do that a little shorter and then we zoom in a bit, I think the ease in and out is pretty slick and looks really nice for video. So recommend that. And then you can change the default durations for when you pull in like a still image. I want it to be five seconds. When I pull in, when I do a video action like I was doing just there, uh, make it two seconds. You can click into these, double click, and then set them to like three seconds. I'm gonna leave that as two, but you can change these to exactly what you want. Then there's tons of shortcuts. <laughs> there's so many here, I cannot go into them. Uh, but basically, if you have a thing that you do in the app, you can use a shortcut for it. Not all of them have shortcuts by default, so you can set shortcuts. Uh, if you wanna do that, you basically just uh, hit configure, and then you want to hit new, and then we're gonna duplicate default, and then say okay. And now I can go in here and say something like, uh, I'll do like control option command nine, right? And so that's gonna pause my recording. And so I can do that, I can modify those. Uh, so you can really have full control over how your shortcuts work. Proxy is something that I 
don't really use <laughs> in the app, uh, but basically proxies are lower quality versions of the video that you're editing that it can use to display in the timeline as you work. So it'll be faster. Uh, it'll be less intensive on your computer. And so I have it set to manual because uh, that basically means I never do it unless I want to. Automatic does it only when it thinks you need to, and then always will make sure that it is creating these proxy uh, files. The only downside to using these is that it adds up to uh, storage on your local computer. So if you don't have a ton of storage, leave it to manual and probably just never use it. Uh, but if you set it to always, it'll make the editing process a little cleaner, a little easier, but again, takes up space. And you can limit how much space you're using for this cache. Uh, you can automatically delete stuff. Uh, you can make sure they're half the original resolution and then you can just choose where you wanna store them. These last sections are actually pretty important. Uh, Default file format is a package document, or you can do a single file document. I like the package document because basically that turns it into a folder. Uh, you can double click it in your finder and just go to the project and open it in uh, ScreenFlow. But you can also do the right, you can also right click on it. You can do show package contents and all of your files are there, including the original source media. So all of your videos, all of your images that you're using in your projects gets added to this packaged ScreenFlow document. And so you can easily access it later in other applications if you need it. Video magnification, you can choose smooth or sharp, and this is gonna be based on your preference. So if we go back here to where I'm zoomed in, uh, let me zoom in even more actually. Uh, you can kind of see this text is a little blurry, it's blurred it. Uh, if I instead do sharp, then you can see it's much more sharp. It's showing exactly what the pixels are. It's not trying to smooth it out at all. Again, depending on what you want, depending on your style, it could be one or the other. I use smooth, but either way works. Screen recording compression, you can do adaptive or lossless. Uh, and basically this is uh, just to make sure that the screen quality is the highest possible without slowing down your machine. So adaptive or lossless. Um, I use adaptive and everything looks absolutely fantastic. So I don't see a reason to use lossless. Uh, computer audio, there's a driver that you can uninstall, scratch disk, um, is where you are. when you're capturing, where are you saving it to? You can save it to your startup volume or you can save it to an external drive or something. And then finally, licenses, which I'm not going to go into because that is going to show you my actual license, <laughs> but basically that is where you paste in your license. And if you haven't bought the license yet, it's where you click a button to go to the Telestream website to buy your license. But yeah, that is all of the preferences in ScreenFlow. Now let's get to editing. <music>